Hello there, Martin North here from Digital Finance Analytics. I'm catching up today with Daniel, who's a web enthusiast, blogger, and um, very much an observer of property, particularly with a Canadian flavour. Hello Daniel, how are you going? Good, how are you? Good, give me the proper introduction. So what's your channel about? What do you do? Well, my channel is Formethist. Um, that's kind of the name I go by. Um, and basically for the last year and a bit, I've been uh, following the real estate market. Uh, I live in Canada, in BC, on Vancouver Island, if you want to be specific. Uh, and the reason I started following it because uh, is because uh, I wanted to buy a house. I've bought a house before, but I didn't think anything of it when I bought it. I just bought it. This time I thought, well, maybe I should learn a bit before I buy. Because usually that's how I operate. If I'm going to buy something, uh, I do a bunch of research. So I started researching, and I was really shocked at what I learned. Uh, because it's been, a, it's been more or less, if you smooth everything out, a slow and steady increase for years and years and years. So the Canadian public is basically in this holding pattern of rising prices. But what I, when I started doing my research, I realized, well, that holding pattern isn't going to hold forever. And when I started listening to people far smarter than myself, I started to realize, well, the real estate market is cyclical. It's it comes up and it comes down, and all the indications are starting. We're starting to look like, and this is a year ago, that the peak was going to come. So that's kind of the story of why I started making videos about the real estate market. It was to basically get conversations going with other people about real estate. Okay. And the critical thing that I see looking at can the Canadian market and comparing it with the Australian market is that there seem to be quite a lot of correlations between the two markets. So, for example, there seems to have been a run-up in credit. There seems to have been a run-up in house prices. There seems to have been some wobbling going on in some markets relatively recently. And now people are starting to talk about, well, you know, maybe prices are going to correct and maybe things are looking not quite as strong as they were. Is that a sort of a reasonable summary? Yeah, I think uh, the fact that uh, interest rates have been so low everywhere it kind of puts us in the in the in this in the same pattern of uh, in in the real estate cycle. Uh, I think the thing that's confusing is um, well, one of the many things that's confusing for somebody who's just starting to learn about how real estate cycles work and credit cycles and business cycles and yada yada is if you're looking the two main centers of uh, this this huge price increases in real estate is Vancouver and Toronto and they aren't moving exactly uh, uh, together so what happened in uh, Canada was uh, Vancouver, Vancouver moved up uh, really sharply first. And, and what happened was the government started implementing, you know, uh, foreign buyer taxes and uh, they've done stuff like Airbnb uh, regulation. So they started, they started uh, putting in all these measures. The other thing that was happening at the exact times, which layered on another layer of confusion, was uh, the Chinese government was uh, kind of holding back money. Uh, they were they were uh, putting in their own regulations, um, from what I understand. The money coming over over from China was a huge. It's a huge thing uh, in people's minds in Canada this idea that foreign buyers are coming over. Uh, so what was happening was at the same time the government's meddling in the housing market, uh, China uh, is doing all the um, uh, the controls on how much these Chinese uh, people can bring over. And the other wrinkle is that 
we have this uh, program through Quebec. So through Quebec, you can become or you can get a, a visa. With, or um, the other one is you can become a student. So that means you're no longer a foreigner. So there's all these different wrinkles. But Sorry, so you can but, then buy property, right? So if you've got, if you're going yeah. through that, then you can buy. So Yeah, so, can, yeah. so the Quebec one was you basically give the, <laughs> you give the Quebec uh, a government a bunch of money, right? Uh, they get to invest it. They, they give you the money back at the end of it, but they get to invest it. Um, and then what what the program was designed to do was people would come over and they would live in Quebec. But there was absolutely nothing stopping them from flying over to Vancouver. And that's what they did. So they, they would give the, the Quebec government a, a bunch of money, hey, good for them, and then they would go over to where they really wanted to go was Vancouver. So it was this huge loophole, this thing that anybody who cared to know would know about it. And it's just kind of like, well, I don't know if you know about, much about Canadians, but what we would say is, well, what are you going to do, right? It's kind of like, oh, so, that sucks, so, shucks, you know. So what proportion of, of uh, the property market would be from foreigners, buying by foreigners, and what proportion would be by property investors? Well, that's the thing. Like I said... Uh, what it comes down to is uh, not so much the, the designation of uh, uh, foreign buyer, it's foreign money. Okay. So that's the thing. Yep. So a lot of the foreign money is getting routed through non-foreigners. Re uh, they've got a visa they can buy without any of the foreign buyer taxes. So that would, that's what makes it so hard because there's no, there's no numbers for that. Right. Okay. So it's it's uh, the the numbers are really hard uh, to figure out because of the fact that they're not foreign buyers, but the money, the money is foreign. Okay, follow the money, as they say. So, so if I think of the overall market, then if you exclude, you know, foreign versus is local, what's the mix between investment property and owner occupied purchases at the moment? As far as actual numbers. I don't know. Hmm, okay. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have any hard the, the, the numbers as that far is as we we have in Australia. We've had in some cases more than forty percent of all transactions from investors, right? Which I think is a right. world record. I don't think I haven't found anywhere yet around the world. <laughs> I wonder if I can pull up those numbers. I'm yeah. going to write that one down. Yeah. No. It, it is a so so the regulators here sort of started belatedly tying back and trying to throttle back property investors but they were effectively in some months more than half of all new loans being written were for investors so our property market is boy is it screwed because of it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah 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 so not surprisingly with interest rates low and everything else so so i was just trying to get a, a relative sort of sense because i've spoken to people in the uk i've spoken to people in the us and, and, and canada and elsewhere and nowhere maybe other than in Hong Kong, have I found anywhere where as high a proportion of property purchases are actually for investing investment purposes. So it's, That it's, would be interesting to know if one of us can find it and we can just edit this in. The yeah, number? Yeah, we, should, we, should, we, should, we should leave a little space. The number is here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Okay. So, that, that, so, that, that, that would be... because. Uh, I don't know if you've seen, uh, wow, well, one of the websites that's really great in Canada is a website called Better Dwelling. Mm -hmm. uh, and they did a story about uh, what happened in the U.S. with their housing bubble. And what they found was, um, what they could really point the finger to was property investors. Now, everybody was fixated on the subprime thing, the subprime crisis. But... When they go back, I mean, it takes a while to go th sift through all the information and figure out what actually, what they actually pinpointed was it was property investment. So I'm sure you've seen The Big Short, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite movies. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. I was trying to find it on Netflix uh, last night and I was like, it's not on Netflix. I tried it. Amazon. It's not on there. So I have to go and buy it, I guess. Anyway, uh, so in that movie, when they're, talking to the nice strippers and you know I've got six houses you know that's what it was it was people who bought 
multiple properties. Yep. No, we, ha we have exactly that at the moment. So, so there are loads of mum and dads who've bought multiple properties, all on interest-only loans, right? So in other words, yeah. paying the absolute minimum back, leveraging the uh, equity in one property into the next property, into the next property, right? So you basically yeah. end up with this whole set of debt shares, and then when, when one goes over, they all go over. I don't focus on the Australian uh, uh, real estate uh, market, but from what it looks like, the, the things I hear is just like, I thought Canada was bad, yeah. okay? So <laughs> when I look at what's happening in Australia, I'm like, oh, geez, well, you guys, you, and you that's, come on. And that's why I'm interested, because you know people here locally sort of assume that there's nothing really wrong here but actually when i actually start exploring other markets right almost every dimension you can think of australia is way out there and the limina didn't have a crash really in 2007 we've got interest rates really low etc etc yeah so it's a bit and that of, and that is the same story as canada right. we, we you know you look at a, a graph of, of australia and canada there's this dip yep. when the when uh, uh the us went went down there's a bit of a dip in in and it's mirrored in Canada and Australia. It's just that when Canada did this, Australia went like this. Yep. It, it, it was the same story. It's just a lot worse there. Well, our, our, some of our ratios, are, other than maybe some Scandinavian countries, we're we are some of the highest on debt to GDP, some of the highest debt to income ratios. So, so what are prices then doing in Canada? Are they are they sort of holding that? holding their own at the moment or are they sliding or what's going on? So the, the, the top end of the market in say Vancouver, the detached market, it's falling off pretty bad right now. But I mean, it's like what people say, uh, uh, inventory will lead prices, right? So um, the sales volume is the story right now. Uh, the sales volume has fallen off uh, in Vancouver, um, to, and again, Toronto. If you if you if you have to think of it, Toronto is just a little bit behind where uh, Vancouver is. So Vancouver is basically a forecast for what Toronto is going to happen in Toronto. It's they, they seem to be working very closely, just with a bit of a leg. So what we're seeing is, and I I live on Vancouver Island, which is. I don't know if people from Australia know where Vancouver Island is, but it's been there. Yep, great place. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's it's all right. Uh, so we are seeing uh, sales volume falling uh, pretty substantially in some areas. There's a place called Port Alberni, and it's it's leading the pack as far as. Uh, now, these numbers won't mean anything because I haven't put them into percentages yet because I just read them yesterday. But uh, Port Alberni is down, I think, 30,000. Uh, 30, I can't remember. That must be year, year over year. It's down substantially. I mean, 30,000 to what uh, uh, average house in Port Alberni, like an average house in Port Alberni isn't like... 300,000, something like that. So it's, it's substantial. Right. So uh, that's and the sales volume, yeah. the sales volume I do know, hmm. uh, that that is down, I think, 35 or 36%. So I, can you imagine, thir down 36%. Yeah. So uh, what, we're, what we're seeing now is prices at the top end, that's falling off, and then the sales volume is a story now. And... Uh, you can only imagine if the, if that continues, uh, uh, sales are down, inventory starts creeping up. There's only one thing that can happen: is prices should come down. Right. And what's interest rates doing? Have, they, have the um, central bank there put interest rates up? Are they still low? What's, yep. what's this? Yeah. Yep. They've uh, they've been rising. They've been rise, raising rates since uh, what was it? Last summer. Right. Last summer. Yeah. So. So are people, they, people getting mortgage repayment shock then as rates go up? So actually, I don't know how it is in uh, Australia. In uh, Canada, most people do, the standard is a uh, five-year fixed. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
So people are renewing their mortgages every five years, whereas in the States, it's like a, a full length term. It's yeah. one, one rate for the whole thing. Yeah. So that makes us a bit more vulnerable. The other thing that's happening is a lot of people are doing variable rates. Yep. And a lot of people, uh, I've done a video on this, are paying a lot more uh, uh, than everybody else is. Like most people are paying, I mean, like last year you could probably get a mortgage rate for, the numbers are like 2.8, uh, 2.8, and then now it's uh, three and a half maybe. That's so it's gone big, up. It's gone up. Big hike. Yeah. 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 It's it's uh it's gone up, and it looks like it's going to keep going up. Uh, I don't think it's really hurting people uh yet. <laughs> I mean, the the big story is that like fifty percent of mortgages are renewing this year. Uh, so but I mean, it's it's going to amount to for most people, you know. They've deleveraged over that five years, so will it really make a huge difference? I don't think it's going to make the the big difference that it's making is for people who are trying to get a mortgage, yes. a first mortgage, first, first, first time buyers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because they've got higher interest rates and they've got uh, B twenty. So I don't know if any of your viewers know what B twenty is. It's it's a uh, it's a stress test. Okay. So if if you can get a mortgage for say three point something, three and a half. Uh, you're going to get uh, tested at more like five. So, okay. so it's one, so and percent percent, higher. one and a half percent, two percent higher. Is that two, two, two percent higher? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's what's uh, uh, the real story. And I mean, the story is it doesn't seem like the, the media is putting out the real story because they're they're twisting it into people can't get a mortgage. Yeah. But I think the real story is people just can't get as high a mortgage. Yep. I mean, the, the media is the media is making out like, oh, people can't get a mortgage at all. No, you just buy a buy less house, you know? Yeah, I have to make a really good crisis story out of everything. We, we've got a reduction in mortgage power, what I call mortgage power, in other words, the people's people ability to, to get a mortgage by about 30% from where it was 18 months ago, right? So, so the average person now gets 30% less on the same wow. income, wow. <laughs> which is why our markets look so. So my, my theory in Australia is we are being led by a reduction in credit availability. So it's a credit crunch. And my theory also is that it's credit that ultimately has been driving home prices up and credit and the lack of credit will drive home prices down, which is why we're projecting about a 20 percent fall over the next couple of years here. Which is uh, not the mainstream view, by the way. A lot of people are saying, oh, no, no, it's just a little thing. It's going to recover quickly. But no, I don't think it is. I think my, my view is that we are just starting the next level of falls in prices here and that the next uh, couple of years are going to be pretty uncomfortable. So wh what's your view in Canada? Are the prices going to continue to slide? Yeah, I think my, well, my big prediction was uh, 2018 is going to be uh, the year that we're going to remember as the beginning of the downturn. Okay. These things happen so slow. So, I mean, uh, but the thing people always want to know is, you know, when's it going to start and how long is it going to take? And I always say, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> the States, it took maybe five years, peak to trough. It took five years to get down to the bottom. And now it's taken about five years, and we're back up to where it was a bit higher probably yeah. right now. So, and then you look at, say, Japan. Well, it was 15 years, I think, uh, peak to trough. Yep. So that's, that's, that's a huge difference in time scale. So uh, the only thing I, I tell people is, is uh, think in terms of years, not like people are, oh, it's going to crash and I'm going to buy a house next year. <laughs> well, you, you could, but you're not going to buy at the bottom. I mean, you got to think in years and follow the trend. Yep. You know, don't. Uh, that's that's the only way to do it. Uh, but as for your question, uh, do I see house prices falling? I I'm looking at at least five years because I think you know I, I say between five and fifteen years they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna fall. Okay. That's my that's my guess. But everybody's got a guess. My my dad thinks it's gonna be ten percent. Yeah. 
Who knows? Well, I'll tell you what, Daniel, I should check back with you in a year's time or a few months' time and see how it's travelling because um, uh, uh, we've, we've been talking here in Australia about prices sliding and they're sliding a lot much quicker than we expected. So I was originally thinking 2019, 2020. I'm calling 2019 the, the the nasty year in Australia for a lot of people. So um, that's good. I really appreciate your time and uh, great conversation. And thank you very much for uh, sharing your views with um, my channel. And uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to switch around and you're going to ask me some questions and uh, I'll talk about the Australian market. And so people can check across to your site to see the other half of the video. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Okay. See you in a second. See you in a second.